question, Mr. Wright? What is your opinion of the American press? I think the American press, once upon a time, was characterized by individuals, great ones, strong men. Men with great purpose, strong prejudices, of course, but also strong loyalties and convictions. Today, I can't see that there is much trend in what we call the newspaper world. No, that isn't the word. What is the, what is the word for this uh, letterpress life? The communications industry? Which the whole country lives now in the newspaper. Mm. Everywhere you go, their nose is in something to read. Yes. Well, how is it we became so literate all at once? How is it now that we are fed, spoon-fed, everything from A to Z by reading this and reading that, by this newspaper, that newspaper, this magazine, that one? We don't seem to have any life at all except by reading something. We learn nothing except by reading. What brought it about? I don't know. Well, you're certainly you're not against eclectic reading. To a certain extent, I am, yes. I think you should not read spasmodically. I don't think you should read just for the sake of reading either. I think if you're going to read, you should read something that'll feed you, build you up, strengthen you, and be what you need to know. What magazines do you read? Almost none. Truly? Then what are the few that you do? Time is the one that I got most out of for a long time. Mm -hmm. I used to get the news from time. But I don't think lately that it's... I've needed it, and I don't think I've read it much lately. Do you feel... I don't feel that I need to get anything of that sort. Mm -hmm. You don't feel that you need the news? You don't feel that you have to be... Only the uh, general drift and the man... I see. Substance of it, the particularities, no. Do you think that you are any less rebellious, less of a radical in your art and life than you were a quarter of a century ago, Mr. Wright? Rather more so. Only more quiet about it. <laughs> to what do you attribute your... Warren MacArthur, a very good friend of mine, once said to me, Frank, here... You don't have to paint your shirt front red and stand out in the street and holler about this. He said, and I begin to think it over, and I think he's right. It is. You don't have to push hard or talk loud or in any way get up to defend what you believe in. If it is right and if it is good and it is sound, it will defend you if you give it a chance. You don't have to push it. I've never pushed myself. I've never turned over my hand to get a client during my life. Mm -hmm. I have never sought publicity of any kind. I have yielded to it because Lloyd Lewis came to me once when I was rolling the reporters downhill in a kerosene barrel and doing all those things to get rid of them. Frank, he said, these boys have to live. Don't you understand? that you're bringing all this down on yourself just because you haven't got the wit to be kind to them and to see that they have to live just as well as you do and they're sent out here to get something and if they don't get it, they may get fired. He said it takes all kinds, Frank, to make a world. <laughs> and so I began to give. Here I am giving again. Yes, you are. And I want you to give, if you will, the answer to just one more question. Go ahead. Are you afraid of death? Not at all. Walt Whitman, Walt Whitman is the guide on that. If you want to talk, consult him, read him. Do you Death believe, is a great friend. Do you believe in person, in your personal immortality? Yes. You believe in so far as I am immortal, I will be immortal. To me, young has no meaning. It's something you can do nothing about. Nothing at all. But youth is a quality, and if you have it, you never lose it. And when they put you into the box, that's your immortality. 
Mr. Wright, I thank you for spending this half hour with us. Well, you're welcome. I hope it's been of some interest. It has indeed. To whoever's been listening, but I don't know.